Good afternoon everyone, it's David Schlothauer here in the home weather office with another detailed tropical weather outlook and discussion for Tuesday, August the 8th, 2023. In this discussion, we're going to be looking at the tropics because there might be signs that we might see more tropical wave activity towards the next 7 to 10 days and that could raise questions, are we going to get any tropical development? We're going to be talking a lot about that in today's update. So to start things off, here's a look at the true color satellite imagery provided by Dr. Levi Cowan at TropicalTidbits.com. There will be a link in the description below this video leading to his website where you can view these satellite images for free. And this is a look at the entire Atlantic Basin even including the Gulf of Mexico, the easternmost portion of the Pacific Basin. And what we have going on right now is virtually nothing to really talk about. There's a lot and a lot of dry Saharan air out here that is just kind of engulfing a lot of these systems. I mean, there's just so much dry air, especially north of these tropical waves that are moving into the Lesser Antilles. We have a lot of this drier air that is just really just piling up across the eastern Atlantic and this is going to be a concerning factor here because that means the sea surface temperatures are going to be allowed to warm up since we have a lot of that incoming solar radiation so the water temperatures do warm up nicely but we do in between have a couple of these tropical waves that we have here we got some deep convection some enhanced thunderstorm activity some showers some breezy winds that sort of thing we have more showers and storms coming off of Africa, but just because we have the deep convection, folks, does not mean we're going to see a strong tropical wave that could develop into a tropical storm or a hurricane. I want to make that clear with you all, and that's why some of you, I follow you, Alec, um, on uh, Twitter, and you, I like your outlooks quite a bit. But just keep in mind, just for a heads up, including for you, Pat's Path Predictor, we have deep convection out there. But again, there's just so much dry Saharan dust. We have some shear that is really not allowing a lot of these systems to develop very successfully. So with that being said, let's take a look at our National Hurricane Center. And I mean, I trust them very much here. There will be a link to the uh, National Hurricane Center in the description below this video. And there is no tropical cyclones that are expected in the next seven days. I mean, there is nothing out there that the NHC is watching at all. I'm sure they're watching those waves eventually coming off of Africa, but really in the short and midterm, I don't think we have anything really um, that we're monitoring, including my forecast here. This is all handcrafted by me. This is my tropical weather outlook. I do release these at least once or twice a day on Twitter. So you could follow me on Twitter at Weather United One if you want to find me on there. In other words, I'm David Schlothauer. So no tropical cyclone activity is expected in the next seven days. And that's my forecast, my outlook. But this is not an official outlook. I want to make that clear with you all. This is just my own opinions, my own forecast let alone but i do release these at least once or twice a day um, based on what i see and based on model guidance so another thing that i wanted to show you all is hurricane or major hurricane dora yeah there's hawaii right there this is passing well to the south of it but yeah hawaii is also dealing with near tropical storm force winds i mean trade winds are just screaming through the islands right now there's a weather station actually that is located on the big island of hawaii that is just uh, right on the northern tip there reporting wind gusts over 60 to 75 miles an hour right now so winds are just screaming through the islands right now from the east northeasterly direction due to those trade winds but also those trade winds are also bringing quite a bit of drier air to the region so you have may have noticed that dew points in the 50s and 60s versus the 80s and upper 70s because the air is dry but look at that there is dora there really spinning vigorously very tiny system with winds that are 130 miles an hour in fact if we take a look at that you can see dora there dora the explorer you probably are gonna laugh at me on what i just said there it is moving to the west right now at 22 miles an hour and again it is a category four 
hurricane as of the 11 o'clock advisory from the Central Pacific Hurricane Center. Yeah, it's a very tiny system, but don't let size fool you because just because they're small does not mean that they are weak. They, this one is clearly kind of debating that. Okay, so another thing switching gears back to the Atlantic again is this is why I have a 0% chance or no tropical activity in the Atlantic. Most of the ensembles from the Euro, or most of the members, I should say, that run the operational and ensemble mean forecast from the Euro, just not showing anything at all. And I mean, only one member here shows 30 knot winds. That is roughly a tropical depression. All of these members here, 20 knots of wind, which means literally very weak tropical depression at the very most. I mean, there is just no support at all that there's going to be anything at all in the tropical Atlantic, at least through the 16th of August. That's what this shows. 180 hours out. So there's a reason why I don't go past that because... The models are going to change. The ensembles are going to change. There's a lot of variability the further out you go. And it's roughly beyond seven days out, which I really don't like to go out towards. However, some support in the Gulf of Mexico. We will see how that plays out. But right now, overall, very quiet in the Atlantic. But what about our operational models? This is our Euro, our ECMWF. And I always like looking at this. Um, when I make my videos because that way you guys get an idea with what to expect too. So what am I looking at here or what are we looking at on this plot? So we're looking at the 850 millibar uh, geopotential height. That's these lines right here. So these lines of uh, our thicknesses in the atmosphere in other words. And then we got our cyclonic vorticity. It's these orange and red colors up here illustrating how much vorticity, how much spin there is in the atmosphere, right? Kind of like this. Cyclonic vorticity. Oh, I hit the mic. Sorry about that. But you get the idea um, on the plot. And then of course your winds and knots at 850 millibars are these right here see these little barbs that's showing us which way the wind is blowing from so now that you know how to read the plot let's put this into motion okay let's do it all right so let's go into tomorrow afternoon and we can see nothing there is nothing at all out here maybe a tropical wave here but it's just dead it's just dead out there it's just not favorable too much dry air, too much Saharan dust, really keeping things at bay right now. And let's hope it stays that way. Let's hope my forecast is wrong like others too. I mean, a lot of people are still predicting 18 to 20 named storms. We shall see. Let's see if late August proves our point. Let's wait until September, right? It could wait until then, you know, but we'll see. So looking at the next 84 hours, there's our tropical wave coming off of Africa. Again, just not favorable out there at all. And this goes out to 180 hours out. Well, I can go further out if I wanted to. But the deal here is big, strong ridge here. Saharan dust coming off of Africa. It's dry. It's just not favorable. It's just, just I cannot... All I can say is it's. I, there's nothing that I can say more to this. Just saying that it's just not really favorable for any tropical waves out there. Looking at our GFS model, this is over the next 12 hours, 48 hours out. This is for August the 10th. Again, very, nothing. There's just too dry, not favorable. Let's go out to 120 hours out. That's day five for August the 13th on Sunday. Nice good tropical wave here, but it's too broad. There's too much dry air that's wrapping around. However, there's a little bit of a trop wave there and maybe something getting into the Gulf. But of course, the GFS is wants to just kind of blow up everything. Anything that's little that it can grab onto, it likes to amplify it. It likes to go aggressive with it. So that's why we use the Euro model for most of the time. Look at this tropical wave, nice and strong. Let's go out to 180 hours out. This is through August the 15th and the 16th. I mean, sprawling ridge here. We got trade winds here. 
just not favorable. Just not. I just don't see anything. Other than we have some vorticity here in the eastern Pacific, but otherwise the Atlantic is looking pretty calm for the time being. Let's take a look at wind shear though. I always like looking at that. That's my favorite perimeter. Yep, there is quite a bit of shear in the Caribbean. A little bit of shear here in the central Atlantic. So somewhat unfavorable. When we take a look at our relative humidity plot in the deep layers, there you have it. It all makes sense. Lots of dry air out here. Just not favorable. Looking at the um, a Euro model out to 180 hours out. Again, lots of dry air. Just, I mean, when these tropical waves try to get going, the dry air just kills them. And that's a good thing, right? We want that. We don't want anyone to get impacted by anything at this point. But there's also other hidden factors that we really need to look at. And this is one of them. Sea surface temperatures right now in the Gulf of Mexico are absolutely uncharted territory. They are very, very warm. I mean, mid-80s, upper 80s, you name it, low 90s in fact, maybe even off the coast here of Louisiana, very warm sea surface temperatures, even off of Cuba. Wow, 32, 33 Celsius, yeah. I mean, really, really warm. And not only that, the 31 degree isotherm really has expanded a little bit further. You can see it right there, and that's roughly 87, 88 degrees Fahrenheit. Look at the 32 degree isotherm. I mean, you could even argue it goes all the way out to here. I even made a jelly or a little bit of a fish. See the fins there? The body is in kind of half of it is over Louisiana. But you can see here too, off of Florida, 32 Celsius. I mean, that's really, really warm. One could even argue these waters even over here are close to 32 Celsius. That is extremely warm, extremely favorable. And all I could say, folks, is, I mean, if something moves over to this area like a tropical wave and the environment is very favorable with a lot of moisture, wow, it's going to explode. It's just going to intensify rapidly because of the sea surface temperatures. And looking at this on another perspective level is on Weather Bell. I mean, look at these water temperatures. I mean, 29 Celsius over here. 29 Celsius off the coast of Africa. 30 Celsius plus over the Gulf of Mexico, Northwestern Caribbean, and in the Bahamas. I mean, long story short, everything, we're ready to go. Sea surface temperatures are not a problem at all. Sheer, eh, a little bit too strong. We need to kind of wind those shear values down a little bit. But look at this. Really, really warm in the deep tropics. The AMO is trying to come back for a very, in my opinion, could see a very busy, possibly a hyperactive season. And again, it could wait until late August into early September. And we could fit everything in in literally a couple of months to give us a very, very busy season. Later doesn't mean better, necessarily. All right, that's going to sum it up for today's Tropical Weather Outlook and Discussion for Tuesday, August the 8th, 2023. I sure hope this video helped you out a lot, folks. If it did, please consider subscribing if you want to get more updates on my YouTube channel on the tropics. Also, subscribe if you want to get updates on the winter weather, too. I do cover winter storms. I do cover severe weather. Next year, I'm looking into doing a lot more of that. So if you haven't subscribed yet, I would highly recommend doing so. Sharing this video with your family and friends on social media. And lastly, be sure to also leave a comment in the section below and hit the bell icon to get more updates. That's going to do it. Thank you all for watching.